I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today because it's time for another video in my series on how to wire up your flight controller. Which flight controller? Yeah, you know what I'm going to say. Any flight controller, because they've got enough in common that when you understand how they work, it doesn't matter. You can just figure out how to wire them up, and that's what I'm going to teach you how to do. Today, we're learning about telemetry. Let's start the video with an explanation of what telemetry actually like does for you. I remember when I was first getting into the hobby and I kind of heard about telemetry and I thought telemetry seemed like the kind of thing that I wanted because, you know, I like data and telemetry gives you data. I don't know. What is it? What, like, what does it do? If we go back to where all this started, which is fixed wings, originally this, you had sensors on board the plane and the sensors were connected directly to the receiver. And the receiver took data from those sensors and passed it back to the transmitter via the wireless interface. So we think of our transmitter as sending control signals to the receiver. But when you've got telemetry, there's actually a two-way connection. The receiver is sending telemetry data back to the transmitter. And the transmitter is sending control commands to the receiver. Examples of sensors that might be on one of those fixed wing models might, well, battery voltage is the simplest one. If you're flying an electric model, you need to know what your battery's at. Uh, a barometer might be to tell the altitude, an airspeed indicator on some some larger planes might have an airspeed indicator, engine temperature. If you have a, a, a nitro fuel, a liquid fuel engine, an engine temperature might help you know if your motor was getting too hot. Uh, fuel level, if you have a liquid uh, fuel like nitro fuel, you could have actually a float in the fuel tank and tell you when your fuel is getting empty. Those are all sensors that we might see on one of those models. And again, just to be clear, those sensors would plug directly into the receiver, or more typically, if you had a bunch of sensors, you'd have something called a sensor hub, and all the sensors would plug into the sensor hub, and then the sensor hub would plug into the receiver, and the receiver would pass the data back to the transmitter. In multi-rotors, the sensors are typically connected to or integrated into the flight controller. The flight controller has a whole bunch of sensors already on it, like for example, an accelerometer, Sometimes it'll have a barometer. Uh, it'll, it'll often have voltage sensing. So many of these things that in a, a, the early days of fixed wings would have required a separate dedicated sensor will just be built into the flight controller. And one day some smart person said, well, shoot, we got all these sensors and we got a receiver that can do telemetry. Let's just have the flight controller pretend that it's a whole bunch of telemetry sensors and pass that data back to the receiver and then the data appears on the, on the transmitter. Other examples of sensors that we might see uh, in a in a multi rotor could be something like a GPS. If you have GPS coordinates, a uh, battery current, milliamp hours. These are all sensors we might see on a multi rotor. If we think about this more generally, we could say that telemetry is a wireless digital data stream between the receiver and the transmitter, and it can carry sensor data. But as we'll see when we get to talking about Lua scripts and changing PIDs and so forth, you can actually carry any kind of data. The main thing that telemetry gets you is the ability to see this information on your transmitter while you're flying. You probably aren't gonna look down at your transmitter while you're flying. More commonly, you can have the transmitter read out data. If you have a, if you have a Tyrannus, it can read the data using the voice prompts, or it can just give an alarm when, for example, your battery gets too low or anything like that. Exactly how this works depends on your transmitter. We can see here on screen, here's an example of the Tyrannus showing the battery voltage on the main screen. And here's an example of the Tyrannus showing all of the sensors that it's detecting from the flight controller. So we've got a voltage sensor here. This is also a voltage sensor. Here's the RSSI. That's the RSSI coming from the receiver, the signal strength. This is receiver battery and so forth. There's more going down off the screen, but that's just a screenshot of some of the sensors that it's seeing. There are two main types of telemetry that you're going to run into when you're working with beta flight, clean flight, and so forth. The first one is free sky telemetry and it is used on all telemetry capable D series FreeSky receivers. So the most common one that my viewers would probably run into would be the D4R2. And some of you are maybe still running the D4R2. If you're doing telemetry with the D4R2, you're doing FreeSky telemetry. Now FreeSky telemetry is one way. It goes from the receiver to the transmitter and not back. And we'll see why that matters again when we get to the section where we talk about uh, Lua scripts and changing PIDs and so forth. The other kind of telemetry that you're going to run into is smart port telemetry. Smart port is newer. 
It is on all X series receivers. So if you're using an XSR or an X4R2, or God forbid, if you're using an X8R, oh, get that big old thing off your off your mini quad. It's used on all X series receivers. Uh, and then one of the things about SmartPort is that it's bi-directional. So it can be used to talk between the transmitter and the receiver both directions. And for the simple telemetry, like reporting voltage and so forth, you think of that as being one way. But in fact, with SmartPort, it's actually a polling protocol where they talk back and forth and say, hey, can you give me new data? Yeah, here it is. And again, that bidirectionality will be relevant when we talk about the Lua script and changing PIDs and so forth. It's a little bit confusing that there's two types of free sky telemetry, and one of them is called free sky telemetry, and the other is called SmartPort, which is also free sky telemetry. You need to know, though, that SmartPort and free sky telemetry are two separate protocols, and which one you're using depends basically on which type of receiver you've got. There are other telemetry protocols out there. There's a spectrum receiver with a telemetry protocol. There's, uh, there's, I think, I don't know, Gropner has, uh, lots of people have telemetry. The thing is, if you have any other kind of telemetry protocol, pretty much than FreeSky or SmartPort, you're going to be able to see telemetry from the receiver to your transmitter, but your flight controller is not going to integrate, at least if your flight controller is running beta flight or clean flight. They just don't support those telemetry protocols. So, for example, if your receiver has a built-in voltage sensor, and some of them do, you, you might be able to wire up your, your flight pack to that voltage sensor, and you'll get your battery voltage on your transmitter. But you're not going to be able to do that through the flight controller like you can if you're using FreeSky telemetry or SmartPort. Wiring up telemetry is, thankfully, not too complicated. On F3 boards, you connect the telemetry wire from the receiver to the transmit pad of any UART that's not being used for some other function. On F4 boards, smart port telemetry must be connected to a dedicated pin that is intended for that purpose. You can't simply use the TX pad on any spare UART like you can on F3 boards. So on F3 boards, you have more flexibility, but on F4 boards, it's, it's completely unambiguous. So you only have one choice for where to put the telemetry. And you see here, we're looking at the Holybrook Akute F4 all-in-one, and you can just barely read right here, it says smart port, and this pad here is the smart port pad. That's where it's going to go. The reason why F4 boards are so freaking annoying is inversion, protocol inversion. And we ran into this when we were talking about serial protocols, S bus, I bus, and so forth. The smart port protocol requires that the UART support inversion. On F3 boards, all bo UART support inversion natively. So as we said, you can use any UART you want. But on F4 boards, no UARTs support inversion natively. That's just not a feature that the F4 has. And so manufacturers have to install an external inverter chip on the board to let SmartPort work. So the manufacturer basically says UART, inverter, SmartPort pad. And that's where you put your SmartPort. It's completely transparent from your perspective. Your F4 board is going to have that pad and SmartPort will only work on that pad. It will not work on any other pad, generally speaking. One of the challenges with F4 boards is that manufacturers implement this in various different ways and is not consistent from board to board. So for example, some boards use a dedicated SmartPort pad like the Holy Broke Akute AIO I just showed you, and that pad is always inverted. That pad is going to go to one of the UARTs, the TX pin on one of the UARTs, and it's going to go through an inverter. Some boards, and basically the Race Flight Revolt is the one I'm thinking of, use solder jumpers which let you set inversion for each UART by bridging two pads. You can either turn the inversion on or off, and you'll need to do that based on whether you're using an inverted protocol or not. Some boards have a software configurable inverter, and this is actually in some ways the best case because it, it makes it look like an F3. You are simply presented with the TX and the RX pads for the UART, and you connect whatever you want to connect up there. And then in software, Betaflight or CleanFlight takes care of turning inversion on or off for that UART. I know I told you that the F4 chip couldn't do inversion. Well, the manufacturer has added an inverter that, that can, it's software configurable. Uh, but that's a little more complicated, and we don't see a lot of manufacturers doing that. Most of them are doing Basically, a dedicated smart port pad is the one that most of them are doing. So here, by way of example, is the Betaflight F3. And yes, as the name suggests, this is an F3 board, which means you can use any of the UART TX transmit pads that you like. So here's one of them. This is TX2. That's UART2. This is TX1. That's UART1. And this is TX3. That's UART3. 
The intent for the board would be that you hook the receiver up here. You can see this pad is labeled DSM2 S bus. So you would hook your, your serial receiver here and that is actually associated with UART2. So UART2 would be taken up by your serial receiver, and then you would use either UART1 or UART3 for your telemetry. Here's the Furious FPV Radiance, and the Furious FPV Radiance has a slightly tighter uh, pinout. It doesn't expose both the TX and the RX pad of all of the UARTs. Well, actually, it might. On the, I'm not sure if it does on the underside of the board, but if we look at this wiring diagram right here, we can see that UART2's RX is going here for S bus, and that's this pad. And UART 3's TX is going here for S port, which is right next to it. Well, where is UART 2 TX and UART 3 RX? Well, they didn't give you those. They, what they're doing there is they're saying, we know that the most common use case is going to be that you're going to use one UART for your serial receiver and the other UART for your telemetry, and you don't need those other pads, so we're going to make the board a little neater and a little less confusing. We're just going to put it right there, the ones that you're actually going to use. With this type of layout, you have a little bit less flexibility, but it's also a little bit of a cleaner build because the exact pads you need are right there, right next to each other, one, two, three, four, and you're ready to go. Here, looking at the Rotor Geeks SSD, there is a telemetry pin right here. Presumably that's for either FreeSky or SmartPort telemetry. Uh, you might think, well, aren't there other kinds of telemetry? But as I said previously, they're not generally, if at all, supported by CleanFlight or Betaflight. So telemetry means either FreeSky or SmartPort. And here's the CL Racing F4. And you can see on the CL Racing F4, they've got a tele pad. And that is for telemetry. And that's where you would put basically SmartPort or if you've got an older receiver, FreeSky. And you can see here in the wiring diagram, they're showing that as well, telemetry from there. And it's also interesting to note, uh, going back to the question about inversion, notice that the SBUS receiver, which is an inverted protocol, is going to the SBUS pad, but the IBUS and Spectrum satellite receivers would be wired to the SAT pad. And what's going on here is the SBUS pad has an inverter connected to it, and the SAT pad does not. Both of those go to whatever UART is, is associated with them. You'd have to look at the product documentation to know. But the reason that they're, they're wired up differently is that IBUS and, SAT and Spectrum Satellite are not inverted protocols, and SBUS is an inverted protocol, so it has to go to a pad with an inverter. I also want to call your attention over here. They've silk screened on the board which UART goes with each, which of these functions. So telemetry is UART 3, satellite, satellite is UART 1, and SBUS is, I, I can't read what UART is, I've covered it up. It's a super cool thing that uh, CL Racing has done to silk screen this on the board so that you don't have to go digging through Google to try and look it up somewhere while you're working on, you know, working on the bench. Here's the Furious FPV Fortini, or Fortini, I don't know how to say it. <laughs> and you can see here they're telling you smart port is on UART 6 and it goes to this pad. Similar to what they did with the Radiance, they've only broken out the pad that they think they're going to use. They haven't broken out every single TX and every single RX pad for every single UART. And that makes the most of the space on this really tight board. Finally, we've got the Race Flight Revolt here, which does a really cool thing that I'm not aware of anybody else who does this, but they let you choose the inversion based on uh, these solder pads. So you basically bridge the solder pads to choose whether the UART is inverted or not. If you were to simply do nothing, then the signal will be passed through unchanged. If you were to bridge INV for inverted to TX4, then it would invert the UART. And if you were to bridge NOR to TX4, then that would allow software to control whether the UART was inverted or not. Here are some examples of receivers you might encounter that might be doing a kind of telemetry that can connect to a clean flight or beta flight flight controller. On the left, we've got the X4R or X4RSB, and that's probably one of the most common receivers being used on many quads today. A smart port is accessible from the plug on the side, and it is the pin that is the closest to the front of the receiver. Uh, what I typically do in my builds is I just take out the other wires and just leave that wire in because I'm not using them for anything. If you're using an XSR, then there is just one plug. There's not any big servo pins like on the X4R, and SmartPort is one of those wires. So you're just going to look what's going to be the third wire from the left and just count the wires, and that's your SmartPort wire. If you're using a D4R2 to do free sky telemetry, then you're going to have both a TX and an RX pin on the receiver. Interestingly, SmartPort is bi-directional on a single wire. 
So smart port goes both ways, but only on a single wire. When you're doing free sky telemetry, it's one direction and it's only used to talk from the flight controller to the receiver. And so you'll be using the receive pin on the receiver since it's receiving data from the flight controller. You might wonder, well, if it's if it's one direction, then why do we have a TX pin at all? And the answer is that's a generic serial interface that can be used, for example, to update the firmware on the receiver. But as far as telemetry goes, FreeSky telemetry only uses the RX pin. And then finally, here is a mini receiver from Furious FPV, and it also has smart port. You can see it's labeled here on the silk screen, S port, and it is this white wire or gray wire coming off of there. So setting up telemetry is simply a matter of connecting the wire from the receiver to the correct pad on the on the uh, flight controller and then configuring beta flight or clean flight to use that kind of telemetry. And the configuration is not that complicated either. On the ports tab, you're going to enable the correct telemetry protocol. That's probably going to be either FreeSky or SmartPort. And these days, most people I think are using X series receivers that do SmartPort. So it's usually going to be SmartPort for most of you, I think. Uh, you're going to enable that in the telemetry output column for whatever UART is correct for your flight controller. So go back to your flight controller documentation or wherever your silkscreen and figure out what UART you're connected to. On an F3 board, it's going to be easy because you just connected to the TX1 or TX3 pad and then you know which UART you connected to. On an F4 board, you're going to have a dedicated pad and it won't always be obvious what UART that is mapped to in the wiring of the flight controller. So you're going to need to refer to the documentation. Again, if we go back real quick, you can see that some of the documentation makes it very obvious. This pad is smart port and it's going to end up on UART 6. Other, here it is, as I said, on the CL Racing. Other times it's not as clear. For example, on the Holybro Kakute AIO F4, there's no indication, I don't think, on the board which UART the smart port pad is mapped to. If you want that, you'll have to refer to the excellent user manual for this board that, who wrote that again? Oh, it was me, yeah. And then once you've got the ports tab configured correctly, the final thing to do is to enable telemetry here in the configuration tab. It's down in the features section. If this is not enabled, you won't be able to use telemetry. There's one final thing to say in this section, and that's to address the question of Lua scripts and the Tyrannus. So, uh, you can use a thing called a Lua script, which is basically just a program that you run on your Tyrannus. And you can use it to change your PIDs, your rates, and if you're doing smart audio, your video transmitter settings, all from the Tyrannus screens. I have a video about that and how to set it up. Uh, you can watch those videos if you want to. That function does not work with D-series receivers. So there are people who have followed that video and they said, I've tried, I've tried, my telemetry is working correctly, and it just doesn't work. And the reason is that the D-series receiver uses the unidirectional, one-way FreeSky protocol. And therefore, you cannot send commands from your transmitter to the flight controller over that link. And that is going to bring us to the end of this video. And hopefully now you can figure out how to wire up your receiver from the previous video and your telemetry from this video. I'll say one more thing before I go out, and that is in this day and age when so many flight controllers have an OSD, many people are not using telemetry anymore, and I get it. If all you care about is seeing your battery voltage or even your milliamp hours, etc., then you don't really need telemetry. And if you don't use telemetry, you can go with some cheaper and smaller receivers. For example, you're going to spend about 25 bucks on an X4R SB receiver, which does have telemetry, or you can spend about 15 or 16 bucks on an XM Plus receiver, which is a perfectly good full range receiver with diversity. The only thing, it doesn't support telemetry. But who cares? Do you really need it? Well, if you want to do Lua scripts to change your PIDs and your rates from your Tyrannus, yep, you need it. But I make an argument, and you may not agree, but I make an argument. I want telemetry on my copters because I like the audible warnings, especially when I'm flying really hard. I don't always want to glance down at the lower left corner of the screen to see what the battery voltage is. I, part That could be affected by the fact that I have Dominator uh, HD2s or HD3s, HD2s, and they have a very, very big field of view. If you have a, a goggle with a smaller field of view, you don't have to look all over the screen to see your OST. You can just kind of look at the screen. But I make an argument I really want the audible warnings, and, and I, I like to be able to hear that stuff when I'm flying. I want telemetry, even if I've got an OST. That's going to be all for now. If you got any questions, leave them down in the comments. And as always, 
happy flying.